I know that we are all crossing our fingers that we can return to our normal travel plans sooner rather than later. So I've been thinking, if money and COVID never stood in the way, where would you fly to first? What about China? I mean, the Great Wall of China has to be one of the most spectacular sites in the world. It was built over different dynasties, and if you don't think that's impressive, take a look at this. The 13,000-mile wall that zigzags through the mountains of northern China has a long history, stretching back more than 2,000 years. It was built by hand throughout different dynasties in order to protect China's borders from invaders. The wall was a formidable barrier, but wasn't able to keep out the conqueror Genghis Khan. Today, there are no conquerors, but the forces of nature, along with tens of millions of visitors, have eroded portions of the wall. Before the pandemic, more than 10 million people a year visited the Great Wall. Different pieces and different sections of the wall are open for exploring, and you get different views and different perspectives. But no matter the piece that you are at, and no matter how it's been reconstructed, you still get to feel the history and the sense of the place. One of the best protected sections of the Great Wall is Mu Tianyu. It's also considered one of the best places to see the Great Wall and the most fully restored. It is around 45 miles from Beijing's city center. I'm just saying that I would not mind catching a flight to see that wall. But when I do, I want to make sure that I'm doing it the right way. So when we really start traveling again, there will be no travel etiquette faux pas for me. So here to help me with all that uh, is etiquette expert Courtney Fadler. Hi, Courtney. Hi, Ashley. Thanks for having me. No, no problem. Now, are there any etiquette tips for while we're at the airport actually waiting on our flight that we should start adhering to? You know what, that's a great question because so many people focus on the etiquette, you know, actually on the plane, but really that etiquette begins the moment we walk into the airport doors. And I think some of the biggest offenses we see are people who are late and in a rush, right? And so they're trying to get to the, to the gate as quick as possible or, or trying to get through security as quick as possible. And so, you know, for those of us who see somebody who's late, it's great for us to have a little grace. And if they're asking maybe to go in front and we know we have some extra time, it's great to grant that. But for those of us who are the ones running late, just remember other people have a time schedule as well. And so even though you mean well, if you really need to get somewhere in a hurry, best just to ask somebody at the airport for help rather than asking the people in front of you and risking inconveniencing them. Now, this hasn't always been a problem, but you know, it's 2022 and people are kind of getting a little crazy in these airports. <laughs> what do I do if I witness an argument on a flight or feel like someone's being rude to me? Is it okay or is it against the travel etiquette to kind of whip out my phone and just start recording or, you know, how does that work? <laughs> We, you're right, we are seeing a lot of that these days. Um, and the best course of action, the best way to do this and to make sure that you're removing yourself from potentially becoming part of an etiquette faux pas or a problem, you know, in the end, um, is that we want to consider, you know, how our actions and instead we want to enlist the help of someone else. So the best thing you can do on a flight is just to immediately flag that flight attendant and have them come. They can diffuse the situation. That way you remove yourself from it. Um, potentially you help out two parties who are unable. I, I was just on a flight recently where two people were arguing over a seat and, and it went on for, I mean, 15 minutes, holding up everybody in line behind them, trying to get on the plane. Um, and it could have been diffused so quickly if they had just flagged the flight attendant who came, who then noticed what was happening and came over and quickly handled the situation. So the best way to do that really is to, is to flag somebody else. Now, what do you think about reclining your seat? Okay, we we always have those people who kind of want to get comfy, which I can't blame them. And you know, my dad is like 6'3", so now he has vowed to only fly first class where he can, you know, <laughs> relax and not really worry about that. But what about everybody else? Um, I love that if we all could just vow to fly first class, that sounds great. <laughs> um, but for those of us who can't, uh, he, here's, here's the best thing too. I, it's the same rule that I have for taking off your shoes. And that is, please don't. Um, so when it comes to reclining, even when you're turning around and saying, you know, do you mind if I recline? Well, you're putting that person in an awkward position because they probably don't want you to recline, but you know, maybe they're being polite and they say yes. Um, so we're all kind of stuck in this together. And the most considerate thing to do is not to recline your seat and to keep your shoes on. And here's the caveat, unless you're on, 
you know, an international or overnight flight where it's clear people are going to be sleeping. It's during that time and people need to. In that instance, people understand that there, that a recline is going to happen, but wait until that food service has been finished um, so that people can put their trays up. And when it comes to removing your shoes, again, it's a, it's a huge no-no unless you're on that overnight flight or that really long flight. And in which case, bring an extra pair of clean socks with you so when you take off the shoes and socks, quickly put on that pair of clean socks and that way um, everybody's going to be in a good position. Oh my goodness. I have like foot phobia, so I cannot stand. Mm. I don't know how long I'm on a flight. I don't care. Don't take your shoes off in front of me, next to me, behind me. <laughs> I know, but we see it all the time. You're so right. I know. I know. Now, what should we do if a kid is behind me just like kicking my seat, really disturbing my flight experience. Is it okay to talk to the parent? Or I wouldn't suggest talking to the child because that's someone else's child. But what about the etiquette of all of this? Where do we stand? Yeah, I think this is one of those situations that probably happens the most frequently on flights is how do I handle that? Um, and you know what? I've actually seen a person turn around and talk to a young child. And you're right. That is absolutely not the way to handle it. You don't go direct to the child. And here's what I would recommend. Number one, have a little grace. You know, etiquette is, again, all about, think, you know, considering how your actions can affect others around you. And again, having a little bit of grace for, for when they do affect you. So if it's not that big of a deal, try just to maybe just manage it for the short flight that you're on. If it becomes a problem, again, enlist the help of a flight attendant. Maybe discreetly go and tell a flight attendant that their child is repeatedly kicking. And then they might have a much better way to turn around or to, to go to that um airline seat and tell the parents, hey, I've noticed your child's kicking, maybe just watch it. And that way it takes it off of you and again, deflects from a potential argument. That's good. That's a good tip. I've had to do that in a movie theater once. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I would see Black Panther and I was like, you will not mess up this experience for me. <laughs> I totally now, understand. can you right. tell everyone where they can go to keep up with you and all your tips? Oh, sure. You can uh, find more tips online on my uh, my website at cfetiquette.com, or you can follow me on Instagram, just at cfetiquette. One more quick tip. Did you know, too, if you are in the middle row, you get both armrests. So just remember, if you're on the window or the aisle, you don't get the armrests of the middle one. Oh, that is a good tip. I never thought about that. Mm, that might change the way some people are thinking about sitting in that middle seat if they get both That's armrests. That's right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Courtney. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And I hope all of you guys are taking notes because you can't travel uh, if you aren't traveling in style. And we can get you right when it comes to that.